Hello everybody and welcome. Today we are going to discuss the solution to the problem erect the fence. It's a hard problem and uh, it's an unusual lead code problem because uh, it's not exactly on the style of interview questions. In fact, this question was only uh, asked in Google interviews one or two years ago and since then it has seen no activity. In any case, this is your type of question which involves an algorithm used in ACM ICPC. So it's worth a shot to learn this algorithm anyways. But before we jump into the algorithm, let's talk about the question itself. You're given an array of trees where each tree is represented by a point. This point is given in the terms of x1, y1. Basically, a tree like this has been given by the coordinates 4, 2, as you can see in this last element here. Similarly, each of these trees has a particular coordinate. The goal of this problem is to find all of those trees which lie on the boundary of this enclosing area. Now, the way we define that by is by saying that uh, if we have a giant rubber band and if we want to contract it, what is the trees it will touch? So let's say we have a giant rubber band that stretches all this uh, area and now we start contracting it. It will stop on these cases where uh, it's 4 comma 2, it's 3 comma 3, 2 comma 4 and then 0 comma 2 here and 1 comma 1 here. So all of these five trees lie on the boundary, lie on the perimeter and so they will be considered in... Uh, sorry. Okay, so we know that these boundary or perimeter trees are important but how do we find them out? and well, before we jump into the solution, we want to fully understand this idea of bounding trees. So let's take an abstract look. This is the case where there are a couple of 10 to 11 points and I've drawn this green dotted line which signifies the perimeter. All of the trees, all of the points on this perimeter are the answers. Now how do we find this and what is it called exactly? Well, this kind of shape that we're seeing here is known as a convex polygon. In fact, this is one possible instance of it and the central property of any convex polygon is going to follow is that any two points inside of it any literally any two points inside of it will have this property that if you draw a line between them that entire line that entire line segment would lie inside of this convex polygon you pick any two points draw a line it is within this convex polygon Feel free to try out more examples. Now, to understand it better, let's take a differing example, which is the case of a non-convex polygon. In this case, there is this these two particular points which show that there can be a line segment such that this particular part is outside of the polygon. If that case happens, we call this polygon a non-convex one. Clearly, we can see that the red dot is not a good point. And we can remove the red dot, connect both of these bottom points here and we'll get a convex polygon again. So somehow this question revolves around detecting which are good points and which are bad points. And one way we can immediately think of is that look at these angles right here. These are green angles. All of them are less than 180 degrees. However, this bad point has an angle which is greater than 180 degrees. This brings us to the first observation. Finding the angles looks like an important part of distinguishing good points from the bad ones and perhaps getting us to the answer. Let's look at the first part now, which is finding the angle. So how do we find the angle? Well, let's take a very, very simple and basic case where there are three points and two of these segments, two of these edges sort of. And as we saw in the convex case above, we have these uh, obtuse angles or acute angles or whatever but all of these are less than 180 degrees. So in this case this green section looks like it's the convex case. It's a beautiful case and this point is a good point. However, this red area can also be one possible case. At this point uh, with these three nodes, these three points, we don't have enough information to see which one is what. And if you're just looking at three points, maybe we have incomplete information to judge. What we can do is introduce some structure. A method or a way to sort of traverse these points can help us. 
basically what I'm trying to say is that we can sort these points. Because if we sort these points, we have a definite order. In fact, consider the x1, y1, x2, y2 and x3, y3 points now. x2 is greater than x1 and x3 is greater than x2. This introduces some sort of structure which we can exploit. Because now we can have this edge x1, y1 to x2, y2 and x2, y2 to x3, y3. And we're going, it looks like in the, uh, in the clockwise direction. And this is the area, this is the angle which we want to consider and this area will be the convex polygons part. Great, so just by sorting, we were able to introduce a structure and exploit its properties to get a mathematical idea of this particular angle. However, considering and calculating these angles may not be the best since floating point and doubles are generally a good thing to avoid if you can. So instead, we'll look at a more mathematical and algebraic solution. What we observe here is that M23 has to be greater than M12. That's because we are going clockwise and this slope is only going to increase. If the slope decreases, then we'll have a convex case, sorry, non-convex case. So it looks like M23 is greater than M12 is a condition we want to follow. Now these two slopes can be calculated by this equation right here. Y3 minus Y2 by X3 minus X2, which is the slope of M23. And similarly for M12. And we'll subtract both of them and say that that must be greater than zero. Just reformulating this line here. Now we can do a head, uh, go ahead and do a cross multiplication, basically giving us this entire long ass expression. Um, but uh, it is a bit too complicated and we have this uh, giant decimal sitting which looks like it's not a good idea. Clearly these two can be troublesome as and if you have seen other linear algebra problems or even like basic stuff you know that both of these can cause a problem in this inequality. What we can do is try and eliminate both of them. And we can do this by observing that both of them are greater than zero. Why is that? That's because of this property that we established earlier. We sorted these nodes. And so X2 is always going to be greater than X1 and X3 is always going to be greater than X2. And so we have exploited this property, which means both of them are greater than zero. Their product is greater than zero. And so we can just get rid of this denominator. And so we are left with this much simpler expression saying that this compute must be greater than zero. Great. So now let's talk about the second part of things, which is how do we iterate over all of these nodes? So now we want to dive into what iterating over these nodes mean. We know for a fact that uh, two nodes are important. At least once we have this X3, Y3 in hand, we at least knew we at least need uh, two nodes beforehand to make a judgment about what the angle is. You obviously need two lines to make a judgment about what angle is in between them. So consequently, you need three nodes or three points. In this case, we are, if we are considering this node, we only need to look at the last two nodes or last two points. And so we'll keep that in mind. We also want to just reiterate that M23 must be greater than M12. If that is the case, then the point x2 y2 gets to stay. So in fact, what's happening is this point x3 y3 decides whether x2 y2 is a good point or a bad point. Let's take a look at another example where a different thing happens. So we have x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 as before. But see now x4 y4 comes. When this point comes along, we want to form an angle between x2 y2 x3 y3 and x4 y4. Right, these three are the points in consideration and we want to look at the angle in between them. However, when we compare their slopes, we find that this condition is no longer being held. In fact, we have got a greater than 180 degree angle over here, which means that, well, it's time for this node to be labeled as an invalid node or a bad node. And how do we deal with these bad nodes exactly? Let's take a look at what we discussed very early on. When we discussed that this red point is not a good point, I suggested a solution as just connecting both of these instead. That would create a convex polygon and will be done. So in fact, removing this point is a good idea. Let's go back to this and uh, 
we'll just remove this point and now we have x1 y1 x2 y2 which will jump to x4 y4 and we can continue on and on keeping the same logic in mind there's one quick note i want to mention it's not always that one node will get removed maybe by addition of x4 y4 multiple other nodes can be removed in between these guys so between x2 y2 and x4 y4 maybe there's x5 y5 over here somewhere so obviously x4 y4 will kick that out as well so we want to look at not just one particular node that gets kicked out but anything and everything in between whoever does not follow this condition whoever does not follow this condition okay now we want to ask the question uh, you know fine we know how to deal with angles and we know how to iterate over them but we also want to know where to start and where to end and to explore that part let's take a different example we know for a fact that in a convex polygon you'll have to go clockwise that is the original uh, sorting what gave us and we have a case like this now x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 again but this time we're looking at it from another angle so we'll have m12 and m23 again and clearly this angle is the one we want to consider but uh, look at what happens m12 slope is greater than m23 slope what happens well earlier we saw that m12 is less than m23 let me show you that again m12 is less than m23 but in this case things get reversed somehow things get reversed why well the one way we can uh, solve it we can solve this problem is by splitting the points into two parts we'll have this upper part and the lower part where we can have both of these conditions now satisfied and this guy happens because you're looking at the points now in reverse direction see in the lower part you started from x1 and then you went to x2 x3 x4 so on and so forth but when you're going in the reverse direction you need to look at the reversed conditions you need to look at the fact that these nodes may be reversed in considerations so we'll actually have to do the reverse over here in fact what changes is the angle condition now and as we saw in the angle case this is the comparison function we developed so it's still greater than 0 for the lower one but now we'll also allow it to go less than 0 for the upper part and that is it that is the three points we need to keep in consideration so let's go ahead and start coding first thing we'll develop this uh, comparison function taking input as three points because in between three points you can form an angle so uh, we want to look at how this angle is behaving now i'm going to do x1 y1 equals to p1 and we'll do this for each and every single point so we'll have x2 y2 for p2 and x3 y3 for p3 pretty simple at the end we want to return what the comparison function is this thing so i'm just going to copy paste it in like this the this format this is by the way one beauty of understanding logic because then you don't have to think about implementation you can just write your logic in whatever language you pick so i'm doing this in python but you can do pretty much this in java or c or c plus plus whatever you want the logic remains the same so we'll have y3 minus y2 here multiplied by x2 minus x1 subtracted from y2 minus y1 times x3 minus x2 okay so now that we have the comparison function ready what do we want to do uh remember that sorting was an important point so we'll have uh, points as the sorted of trees basically we'll sort all these points and now we want to iterate over them so we'll iterate for a point in points now what do we do here while iterating we need to keep a track of uh, who these two people are who these last two points are for the lower part and the upper part separately remember both of these are being considered separately we're looking at this splitted out into two parts so we'll have upper here empty list lower here again an empty list and in these list we're going to fill these points so we'll do upper dot append 
the current point. I'm going to do tuple of point and I'm going to explain why I did that in the towards the very end. <coughs> okay, anyway, once you add this, you also need to be careful. When you are looking at this x4, y4 point to be added, you're also going to kick out these points which don't follow this property, which are the red points, the invalid points. And what are the invalid points? Well, they are basically the ones which have this comparison not following the conditions. And since there can be many, we'll do, do a while loop. So while comparison of, uh, let's say lower minus two. So the last second point, the last point and point, we'll consider all of these three. And what do we want it to be? In the lower case, we want it to be greater than zero. So we'll put greater than zero over here. If that is the case, lower dot pop, kick out those points which don't follow this cute little condition of ours. For a quick sanity check, we'll also need to keep in mind that lower has to has two elements, otherwise uh, we can't access those. So uh, we'll also put length of lower must be greater than or equals to two. And now we can do this. We'll do the exact same logic for uh, the upper guy. So I know this is a, a lot of copy pasting, but the logic is pretty beautiful and the code very clean. Okay, I'll move it up. Now in this case, we want to consider it less than zero. And we'll do upper dot pop and uh, all of these operations remain the same. Now at the end, what do we want to return? Lower has the lower convex hulls points and upper has the upper points. So we'll just do upper plus lower, easy peasy. However, they may have repeated points. And to handle that case, we'll actually do a list of set of upper plus lower. This is by the way, I used a tuple here uh, because we are going to create a set of all of them. Set requires uh, the items inside of the set to be hashable and list is not hashable in Python, tuple is. So we have converted into a tuple like because. so. So let's do a quick sanity check. Uh, finished. It looks like, yeah, the ordering is different, but we have got the points right. So let's submit this and accept it. So anyways, this is it for the solution of erect the fence. Again, very interesting problem relying on uh, a simple algorithm, which is known as Graham scan. This entire explanation was just about gram scam. Just, I just explained the different components of it. So it felt very intuitive, but anyways, yeah. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up that reaches many more people. And uh, if you have any feedbacks or comments, let me know in the comment section below. If you want more of it, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.